Please enjoy our attractions. I'm terribly sorry they're so limited at the moment. I convinced my performers to come here, to spread high elf culture in these lands. Bring a little piece of Somerset to Grotwood, you see? But the train bugs are sick, our magician supplies are missing, and our storytellers' stories fell flat. None of us know the area well enough to resolve these matters. Now we're a carnival, with nothing but a fortune teller. Huzzah! I'd gladly pay the coin provided by the Somerset Cultural Expansion Council to anyone who would help us put on the show. My performers can best explain their setbacks. Corner is our bug trainer, Norian, our storyteller, and Vindare the Magnificent is... well, she's magnificent. I have to describe her that way. It's in her contract. I'm sorry, but I have nothing to say. That is my problem. I literally have nothing to say to these people. All my stories about the amazing deeds of long-dead High Elves. The first rule of my profession is to know your audience, and Grotwood is not a place to tell such tales. I plan to seek out Wood Elf stories in taverns and libraries, but since we arrived I've heard of countless troubles in Grotwood. The Worm Cult, Pirates, Wood Elf Rebels. It's all the same. I'd rather keep to the safety of the Carnival. The Wood Elves rarely write their stories down. But I heard Scholar Glorolan in the Elden Root Mages Guild is the one to ask. If you're headed that way, would you mind asking for a book? It could be written in Old Akaviri for all I care. Anything would help. Look at them. Limbs so sluggish and carapaces dreadfully dull. When you've raised the shock since they were pupae, it gnaws at your heart to see them so listless. They're having trouble managing the local grass. So I've put them on an all-hay diet, and the climate. It's more humid than they're used to in Somerset. If I didn't know any better, I'd say they were homesick. When they were younger, I'd grind mud crab eyes into paste and give it to them as a treat. I think it would raise their spirits again. But nobody sells mud crab eyes. And I can't leave my shocks to fade away while I scour the coasts. I would forever be in your debt, my friend. A dozen would be enough to go around if you wouldn't mind. And I won't mind if they're a little mashed when I get them. Saves me some work. I hope you didn't travel from far away just to see Vendare the Magnificent. I am not performing at present. My magic cannot function safely in front of a crowd. The, uh, stars are out of alignment. Oh, did she? Did she also tell you how she promised that would make ten times our normal take by coming to this godforsaken backwater? Did she mention how she said shipping my supplies wouldn't be an issue? The shipping was fine. It's the delivery where it fell apart. My belongings arrived at the docks of Haven without incident. But due to the recent problems in the city, no one has any idea when deliveries will resume. As far as I'm aware, yes. They're in the nicest looking trunk on the dock. I had it touched up by a painter in Matisson, you know. But with the pirate attack, who knows when Haven will be stable enough to deliver their backlog of shipments. I couldn't ask you to lug that heavy monstrosity all the way here. It's triple reinforced steel with an inch thick lead interior. Discourages my competition from snooping. I just need the supplies inside, if you wouldn't mind, of course. Good luck finding the mud crab eyes. Only if you have the time. I realize it's not the most glamorous request. Would you look at that? Just the smell of the thing seems to have perked them up. I'll see if I can use them to motivate my little friends. I'm Kornar, a bug wrangler. What does that mean? Perhaps my little friends here can show you. Now, defend the perimeter. Return to positions. Around the world.
Return to positions. Show us your dwarf impression. Return to positions. And now, my minions, surround the intruders. A joke, everyone. They are completely harmless. Unless you're a blade of grass. Move on back, my pets. That's our show, everyone. My little friends here need a short rest before their next performance. Please enjoy the rest of Sarandel's carnival. Do you have them? You have them, don't you? Oh, I shouldn't get my hopes up. They fell in the sea, didn't they? I knew it. I have the worst luck. Wonderful. That's everything I need. Once Haven gets its act together, they can deliver an empty trunk. You're welcome to stay for the show. Sit wherever you like. You won't regret it. Unless you hate stage performances. Then you'll regret it. <laughs> but hopefully you'll enjoy it. is dedicated to someone in the crowd who helped the show go on. I don't want to embarrass them, but they... And now, I'd like everyone to meet my assistant, Sulamir. Come on out. Sulamir, say hello to the crowd. To these bumpkins, run. What an awful thing to say here in Gratwood. Perhaps there's a way we can accommodate you. What are you doing? No! That's better, isn't it? <laughs> you know, I think he's less stubborn this way. All right. I suppose we've had our fun. Time to restore my assistant. Sulamir, return to your true nature. You fool! You foiled my plans and revealed my true form to everyone in this wretched land. Sulamir, you were a Jamora all along. I won't allow you to harm these fine people. You think you can stop me? No! Release me! And now for the rest of you. You forgot one thing, foul creature. What might that be, Morton? The people of Gratwood are closely tied to the forest itself, and you cannot withstand the might of the Green Pact. This can't be happening. The Green Pact isn't real. It's real enough to kick you back into the pit from which you crawled. Everyone, find your will to mine. Together we can banish him. No, not back to oblivion. Yes! <laughs> With your help, we've banished the foul Dramora. Behold the might of the Green Pact. I hope everyone enjoyed the show. Yes, how can I help you? Huh. My people mostly leave such matters to our spinners to share, rather than writing it down. I have something, but I can't imagine you'd want Nakaviri spies' writings on our heritage. A cultural infiltration document. <laughs> Complete garbage. Really? You read Akaviri? Well, no matter. You're welcome to it. Let me see, I'll have a copy around here somewhere. A moment, please. Here we are. One flawed Akaviri depiction of my people. Huh. 
I hope you found it as amusing as I did. What do you have there? A book? This book? It's written in Akaviri. This is wonderful. Uh, nobody here will be able to find the source of my stories if they're written in another language. My Akaviri is a bit stale, but I think I can manage. You're welcome to stay for my performance. Indeed. The Red Pact forbade the consumption of meat. It mandated the trees be cut down for homes, and fruit and vegetables alone sustain the Wood Elf people. Shocking, I know. But Molag Ball wished to keep the Wood Elves weak and sickly by making them eat the very forest around them. Such is what the God of Schemes planned. A slow death brought to the heart of Ifre's power. But the God of the Forest was no fool. Approaching the dwindling, sickly Wood Elves and noting their grass-stained teeth, Ifre offered them a deal. They would make a new deal, a fresh green pact, and the forest itself would always defend them. And so the Wood Elves accepted Ifre's offer. The meat mandate defied Molag Ball's red pact, as did the bone and leather used to build their homes. Molag Ball's rage was great. He would repay the breaking of the Red Pact with the devouring of Gilvardel. But that is a tale for another time. Thank you. Would you look at that line? We're drawing more people than in Oradon. We'll perform our hearts out. The Wood Elves will see there's more to the Somerset Isles than stuffy politicians. Return any time you wish. If there's enough call for it, we may have new performances to share. <laughs>